Welcome to Swami's classroom. The lecture today is about engineering economics, part one. Why it is so important, engineering economics? In, if you write the FE exam, Fundamentals of Engineering exam, that requires a topic on engineering economics. So this lecture provides you a brief overview, what are the elements you need to learn. The elements you need to learn are cash flow and equivalence, depreciation and alternatives. The cash flow and equivalence are covered in this part one. Depreciation the alternatives are covered in part two video. Let's look at the cash flow. What is a cash flow? The money received and money dispersed. In other words, money in, money out. You represent that in a simple diagram, what we call cash flow diagram. So as an example, suppose you have new car you purchase for $20,000. Okay, that means you are spending 20,000, cash flows out. Then your maintenance costs $700 per year. So you spend $700 per year, money goes out. Then you sell the car for $10,000, end of the fourth year. That is, you get $10,000 into your hand. So if you represent that in a diagram, I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0 represents the beginning of the first year. 1 represents end of the first year. Similarly, 2 end of the second year, 3 represents the end of the third year, 4 is end of the fourth year. If you look at the cash flow, first $20,000 goes out. So money out is negative, money in is positive, positive up, negative down. So $20,000 showed down arrow, $700 each year shown by down arrow, $10,000 up arrow for money in. So this is a simple example of cash flow. Now let's look at the cash flow equivalence. What is cash flow equivalence? Suppose if you have $100 today, what will be equivalent or what will be to what after one year or two years? So that's what cash flow equivalence. So there are three different categories in that. One is single payment equivalence, uniform series equivalence, uniform gradient equivalence. We will see each one of those. Before that, let us define certain parameters so that we can calculate these values. So one of the parameters, P is present value of the money, F is future value of the money, A uniform amount per interest period, that is amount received or amount spent uniformly every year. G is a uniform gradient amount per interest period. So it tells you how much money increases per year or decreases per year, that gradient given by G. I is interest rate per period. What is the interest rate per year? One period equal to one year or sometime it could be quarter or semi-annual. N is number of compounding interest periods. So if it is so many years or so many quarters or so many half years. Now to do that, the formulas are given by FE Supply Reference Handbook. When you write the FE exam, you'll be given a handbook for reference. That book has all these formulas, so you don't have to memorize them. Okay, so for example, if you want to find what is F over P, simply equal to 1 plus I power N. So similarly for various ratios, we can calculate using these relations. These relations are computed and given for you in a table form also. I just picked for i equal to 6%. We can see for various values of n, number of years, varies 1 to 100. You have all the ratios are given in the table. The, in the reference handbook, the tables available for i equal to 0 0.5%, 1%, 1.5%, 2%, 4%, 6%, 8%, 10%, 12%, 18%. So you have 9% you need, then you, cannot, you don't have a table, you need to use a formula. Let us see for each category, examples, single payment. Suppose you want to double the investment at 6% interest rate. That means so whatever the present value, the future value should be double of that. So F over P equal to 2, or I equal to 6%. How many years you can do that? That's what you need to find, N equal to what? So F over P 
equal to 1 plus i power n. That's the formula from the formula table. So f over p equal to 2, 1 plus 0 0.06 power n, solve for n. So take the log ln 2 equal to n ln 1.06, the natural log. So n computed as number 12. We can get the same result using the table for i equal to 6 percent table. Right? So for look for f over p column, weight that becomes e almost equal to 2, approximately equal to 2 right here. Now go across, you'll see number 12. So you get the same result quickly using the table. Now let us see uniform series. Here example is invest $200 per year at 6% interest. What is it worth in 7 years? That is every year you are investing $200 uniformly. So A equal to 200, N equal to 7, I equal to 6%. What is the future value? Because that's what we are interested at the end of the seventh year, what is it worth? So f equal to f over a times a. So it's just like algebra, a cancels, you get f. But you need the f over a factor. Go back to the table, i equal to 6%. Look under f a column for n equal to 7. You will see 8.3938. So multiply by a, which is given. So you get 1,679. Now another example, suppose you need to save $10,000 in 10 years at the interest rate of 24% annual interest compounded quarterly. So how, how much you have to deposit per quarter? So now everything in terms of the quarter you need. So for 10 years, 40 quarters, because each year 4 quarters, 10 times 4, 40 quarters, F equal to 10,000 future value. I per quarter annual interest divided by 4 equal to 6 percent. Right? So you need to find what is A. That is every quarter how much you have to invest. So A equal to A by F times F. Because what is given to us? F is given. So A by F times F. So for N equal to 40, I equal to 6 percent. Look in the table, you get 0 0.0065 for A by F. Times F is given, 10,000. That gives you $65. Now uniform gradient. Here, let us say bonus, you receive that pays $1,000 in the first year and increases $500 per year for eight years. What is present worth at 6% interest? So what we know is A is 1,000. That is uniformly you receive that. The gradient, every year $500 increase, this is a G equal to 500. Interest I equal to 6%, percent yen equal to 9, because first year you receive 1,000, then for next eight years you get $500 extra. So that will be total number of period, so 1 plus 8, 9. So what is the present worth? So P equal to what? Now if you look at the problem, we are given A and a G. Two parameters are given. We need P. So that means each one, we need to find what is the present worth. So P by A times A plus P by G times G. So P by A at 6% interest, N equal to 9. Look at the table, we get 6.8017 multiplied by A, which is 1,000. Similarly, P by G for N equal to 9 at 6% table, you'll read 24.5768 multiplied by given G, which is 500. Then sum them up, you get 19,090. So the ratios if you look at it, the numerator is unknown, denominator is known, multiplied by the known. Okay. So look at the problem, what is given. So those are the known that comes in the denominator. The numerator is the unknown, which is P. So using that, you can find the values. So that completes the lecture. Happy learning.